Hello, everyone, and welcome back to an all-new episode of The Blurb. I'm Kelsey Drennan. And I'm Chris Abreu. We start off today with the return of an old favorite film. That's right, Chris. Bad Boys for Life or Bad Boys Forever. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence announced the fourth movie in the iconic Bad Boys franchise, and it's on the way. After Smith had posted a video via Instagram of him and Lawrence hyping up the anticipated fourth movie, Sony Pic Pictures confirmed the untitled sequel is in early production. Warner Bros. scrapped Batgirl, and the filmmakers from Batgirl are returning to direct Bad Boys. The third film, Bad Boys for Life, earned over $426 million worldwide, and the two stars joked about how they should have called it something else because they are struggling with naming the upcoming fourth film. What do you think the name should be? Be sure to let us know. I'm going to be honest, I haven't seen them, but I heard that they're pretty good. I'm also going to be honest, only heard good things, but I haven't seen them. Maybe we should get on that. No, definitely. <laughs> Moving on, Woody Harrelson is joining the Five Timers Club this weekend for hosting SNL once again. His latest movie, Triangle of Sadness, was nominated for three Oscars, but also has a new film coming out March 10th called Champions. But the Hunger Games star will host alongside musical guest and Detroit native Jack White. Fans are excited by this host announcement that was unveiled during the show that was hosted by Pedro Pascal, or more widely known as The Mandalorian. Harrelson would join Steve Martin, Tina Fey, Paul Rudd, Tom Hanks, and Justin Timberlake in the Five Timers Club to name a few people in this elite group. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I love SNL. I watch no, every I, weekend with my family. I don't watch it as much, but I should mm. get back on that. Well, there are some things that all performers strive for, and getting EGOT status is one of them. In case you don't know, EGOT stands for Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony, and to get the status, you've got to collect them all. And at the Grammys this past Sunday, actress and legend Viola Davis earned that very status. Davis won a Grammy for Best Audiobook, Narration, and Storytelling, recording for her own memoir, Finding Me. The book depicts Davis' life as she examines the radical steps she took to find herself and her purpose. Davis won her Emmy in 2019 for How to Get Away with Murder, her Oscar in 2017 for her role in Fences, and she won two Tony Awards, one for the play version of Fences and one for her role in the 2001 play King Hedley II. Congrats to Viola Davis. Yeah, she just, deserves it. Yeah, just wait till I get my EGOT though. Oh, my personal I, dream. I will, I will. You'll be holding your breath for a while. <laughs> if there is one thing I love, it's some good old fashioned drama I can watch from a distance. And when there are celebrity couples, there's drama. Iconic couple Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck attended the Grammys this past weekend, and despite the time of year, love did not seem to be in the air. The couple was shown on screen for several seconds as they appeared to be in the midst of an argument. The clip of the two seems to reveal that J.Lo snapped at Affleck after he whispered in her ear, only for her to tell him to sit up straight, thus resulting in an eye roll from her. However, that's the point where she realized they were being recorded as both of their demeanors changed in an instant. Good luck to the happy couple. Good luck, indeed. <laughs> I have nothing to say. <laughs> this dude is going. <clears throat> yeah, well, Harry Styles won Album of the Year at the Grammys Sunday night, but amongst the success and high fashion looks, it was revealed that during the Stars As It Was performance, the turntable that dancers and Styles has stood on started turning the opposite direction. In a show must go on mentality, the performers dance the entire routine backwards of how they practiced good for them. A dancer, Brandon Mathis, took to social media to explain the situation, even though through from the eyes of viewers, everything seemed to be according to plan. I saw the video and there was a video where he like literally was like moving his finger, <laughs> like turn it the other way, please. That's kind of horrifying, but if we move on to a performance that is definitely going to be perfect, or multiple performances that is, Queen Bee is back like she never left. Beyonce announced her worldwide renaissance tour last week. This will be her first solo tour since 2016's formation, which grossed over $250 million. Renaissance will include over 45 shows as pre-sale tickets have already begun selling out. Fans have taken to social media posting the news, despite there being a large amount of outcry from people who said the tickets are too expensive. There have been countless memes making light of the exuberant prices, but some fans have even set up GoFundMe accounts for the tickets. Are you going to see Beyonce live in concert, or are you liking the rest of who couldn't even afford SZA tickets? Um, yeah, I would give anything to go see Beyonce, but I, just I don't also have the money. Listen, I'm broke. saving up for um, Big Time Rush again because they're <laughs> going to be in Columbus. Anyways, Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Rossi renewed their vows recently as a surprise to Ellen on her birthday. The ceremony was officiated by none other than Kris Jenner. 
Ellen and Portia have been married for a total of 14 years, and the event was attended by Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Katy Perry, and Orlando Bloom. Brandi Carlisle performed for the festivities, and all in all, in all, it was a very heartwarming event. Congrats to the happy couple. They should take, or Ben Affleck and Jayla should take notes. <laughs> they should take notes. Next up, our right. hosts dive into the world of TikTok and some of its rather dark sides. TikTok, the overly addicting app we all know and sometimes love. While some love the endless scroll, some have had enough. When does the hype go too far? And when does it become toxic? Let's talk TikTok. Ooh, Ooh. I like that. <laughs> so we're gonna start with one of my favorite phenomenons on TikTok right now. Kim Kardashian and her daughter North. I can't get enough of it. I really can't. I'm obsessed <laughs> with it. It's my favorite thing to watch right now. I don't I don't know. I just I can't stop. I can't stop. I love the the I know that like now, obviously because North is, you know, a child and I do respect that Kim has taken all comments off videos. I think that is a very like strong parenting move. And I respect Kim for that, but I do think it was funny at the beginning when she had the comments on. And everybody was commenting, Northy, just like tell us mommy's little number on her little card. <laughs> yeah. Just like tell us what are the three little digits on the hey, back. What are the last three digits yes. on mommy's credit card? Yeah. So I that, think that was funny. It's crazy, but if you were gonna comment something, I guess it would be right. that. Right. True. Yeah. But I, I love that they really are doing TikTok right. They do the lip sync videos, they do the dancing videos, but. Lately, she's been doing skincare and makeup videos too. She's gonna How be a beauty about guru. A child caring about their skincare routine. You know that is a valid question, and I do wonder if it might be not the right move. But you know, I think that you can't. She grew up in the house she did. I don't think there's any way around it. You know, she, Kylie <laughs> Jenner's her aunt, yeah. who's got the whole skincare line. Kim has a skincare line. The dog probably has a skincare line. I don't even think they have a <laughs> so dog. True. But like, they all have these brands. So it's obviously just like, it's what they're gonna see. It's what she's used Was to. Was there so. any escaping it? Right. Maybe not. Well, remember in like the early seasons of the Kardashian, keeping up with the Kardashians, um, Kylie was getting in trouble for the same thing, mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. all the makeup and everything. So yeah. it's interesting. I do think we have to point out that North is nine years old. That's true. Which is, I thought she was like 15, so I don't yeah. know if that was just my mistake or if that's like common knowledge. I really thought she was like 15. I did not know she was nine, not even in double digits. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, that leads us right into children on TikTok. Mm -hmm. What is the right age for a kid to be on TikTok? Should their parent be controlling it, like turning off the comments, regulating it? What do we think about kids on a social media app like TikTok? See, I didn't even get like a phone until I was 13. So like mm -hmm. 13 or older, I would say was like a better age at least mm -hmm. for kids. And a tech, especially TikTok, trends come and go so fast. And like there's so many people influencing you to buy things, Absolutely. look certain ways, yada yada. And that as a kid can just be so much. And I just don't think anyone younger than that should really have to put up with it. I think if I was nine years old, I would have found mother's credit card and bought some Oh, 100%. Things. Like I, especially because like there's, even like the Stanley Cup, the Drunk Elephant skincare products, like everything comes and goes so fast. I'd be like, yep. Mom, I need it. Exactly. I need it. And Everyone as fun as it. TikTok is though, it, there's like bad things on there at the yeah. same time. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? I don't think a it, nine year old should mm -hmm. be seen. It definitely that. can be dangerous. I've yeah. seen yeah. some yeah. disgusting things on TikTok. Yeah. And I've seen some very inappropriate things on TikTok. Yeah. So. I think <laughs> that the, the age limit, I think might be 13. Mm -hmm. I, st I still yeah. think that, you know, under 13, absolutely no. Like, I don't think you should be on any social media at all. Mm -hmm. And I think 13 to like, we'll go like 15. Yeah. 15, I think, is where you can like fully make the decision. I think that should be monitored by parents. Yeah. And I know that's like me saying like literally nothing because I didn't have my stuff monitored that much when I was younger. But like, I knew what to do and what not to do. Yeah. And obviously, we don't have the mega mind that is TikTok, you know, like like we've been saying, this is a huge platform with so many different things coming in and out of it every single day. So I think that, you know, it is something that's important to be monitored by parents at such a young and impressionable age. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I truly think that it should be monitored until you're at least 15, 16. Mm -hmm. When you're old enough to drive, then you can, <laughs> I can yeah, trust you, you on have access. Media. So speaking of parents, what do we think about parents exploiting their kids on TikTok? Like, one, two-year-olds that don't even have a say in it. Just like don't. I think yeah. it's icky. Yeah. I think it's disgusting. I think it's gross. Mm -hmm. 
the kid doesn't even know what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And it happens so often too, which is what is what's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. if you want your kids a part of like your social media, just talk about them. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. show them. Even like talking about them can be a little weird, but like if you're actually showing your kid online, you don't know who's going to see it. Yeah. And there are a lot of weird people online, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And it's really easy to find people yes. nowadays, which is awesome. You get a first name sometimes and that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So speaking of first names, I think everyone knows Alex, Alex Earl. This oh, beautiful queen picture behind queen. us. She I is the don't. new what? It girl. I really don't. Well, let me tell you, she is the new oh, it girl okay, yes, on guys. TikTok. She goes to Miami State. Miami University. Miami Uni I made up school, but it's fine. <laughs> um, she goes to Miami University. She is the it girl right now. And that can sometimes set some expectations for younger people, me included, yeah. that I want to look like her. I want to be Alex Earl. She slays. Me too. I mean, like, literally look at her. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you're at an age, because, you know, if she's in a university, if she's out of college, and you are as well, I think you're at the age to allow yourself to have some influence from her. And yeah. I think that's totally fine. I think that an age, you know, where you're talking about, like, nine and stuff like that, you're still very impressionable, and I don't think that should be something that you look up to and, like, look forward mm -hmm. to. You should be exploring, like, you know, your own activities and your own self-expression. You shouldn't be looking up to someone at that age because at our age now, we already know who we are. We know what we like and don't like. So we can allow some influence, but not enough. And I think that kids shouldn't have that at all. It's it's scary to, if I was nine years old and I saw people like that, yeah. what would I do? Like, I, I mean, I was very impressionable. That was yeah. me with like Hannah Montana. Oh, I'm, one, I'm oh, not even gonna lie. Like, <laughs> But you knew that wasn't yeah. realistic to right. a sense. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting, yeah. which kind of leads us into the beauty community. Mm -hmm. Is it too much drama or is it kind of a sleigh? I don't know how I feel. <laughs> it depends on the day. I feel like <laughs> there's some, yeah. there are some things where I'm like, really? Are yeah. you really upset about this? And yeah. then there are other things where I'm like, okay, okay. It's yeah. just like, why are there so many makeup scandals? Literally. Lashgate, y'all fall on Lashgate. <laughs> yes. I've been hearing all about Lashgate. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy how <laughs> upset people get over makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like to a point I'm like, is it that serious? Is it is it are we really is it that serious? Like I just don't I don't know. And I, then also I've been on gym talk lately. I don't know if you guys oh, have Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but Never ever. Is it motivating or is it toxic? That's it makes you know, me think like you need to be going to the gym more, like mm -hmm. you should be doing this. And then when I don't I'm like shit like Yeah. Why aren't you doing what yeah. they're doing? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. I think it's that's what it is again. It's that that power dynamic that TikTok has where they're able to push and push and like make you feel ways you don't need to or mm -hmm. want to. That's like what the real problem is and that's and the root of the situation. And you can't stop scrolling. Right. You just keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So has anyone deleted TikTok? Has anyone come close to it? I haven't, but I also no. didn't get TikTok until a little bit after everyone else was already like, TikTok, I love TikTok. I was like, I don't really care. But yeah, I just kind of go on there because it's basically like a revine for me almost. You know, it's mm -hmm. like Vine came back to life. I only watch it for funny videos. I don't post. And there is some really funny stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Like, I'm sitting there look, going through my For You page. It's like funny videos or Disney videos. Mm -hmm. Like, that's my For yeah. You page. I think it's what you also allow yourself to view on your For You page. Like, I get the manifesting TikToks all the time. That's like, oh my if God. you interact three times, your life is going to change. I'm like, no, it's not. Or Bye. the tarot card readings. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll get like four in a row, and I'm like, mm -hmm. which one are you? My are? life is changing. Like, which one's true? Right, like, and it's, we know it's not. Like, that's yeah. not real. But we're allowing ourselves to be influenced by that, so it's time to <laughs> go on. Yeah, I think the closest I've come to deleting it is like my For You page was all stuff I did not care about. So I literally just had to sit down, spend time, be like, not interested, not interested. I really mm -hmm. don't care to about force this. Force the algorithm. Exactly. <laughs> and now it's me. better. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is good. Yeah, yeah. and that's like, I think it's easy to get sucked down a hole of things that you don't like, and oh, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. But I never really get bored of it. No. Which is scary. Mm -hmm. But I just have so many people that I like check in on there. Like yeah. I follow so many people, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if they posted today. Mm -hmm. It's like my routine now. I have like a routine of it people is, I go I through. I wake up, I'm on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are our final thoughts? Do we love TikTok? Do we hate it? I love, love hate, TikTok. How we feel? <laughs> I'm in that love hate. I yeah. think that you know you have to be in a certain age level, a certain mindset, and you know, be not impressionable enough to enjoy TikTok and understand that you have to go into TikTok with your own thoughts and your own values because you don't want to have that impression from other people. So again, I come back to get kids off TikTok. I agree. Yeah. Well, while TikTok may still be a mystery to all of us, 
one mystery is ready to be solved. See what we have to say about the new Scooby spin-off, Velma, after the break. Jinkies. Holy mediocrity, Batman. Velma is HBX, HBO Max's new Scooby-Doo spin-off, created by Charlie Grandy and serves as an origin story to the Mystery Inc. The show is based around Velma Dinkley, played by Mindy Kaling. The show has become the worst rated show on IMDb and has a negative and has received negative reviews from critics and fans. Jinkies, right? Well, today we are going to try and figure out why is this so hated? So I guess I just want to start with you guys' overall thoughts. Dalen, what was your overall thoughts of the show? I didn't think it was real. <laughs> like when I first saw it, you know, when they first showed, um, like way back when they first showed Black Shaggy, I was just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I wasn't against it. I was like, okay, this will be different. And then it came out. I didn't think it was possible. Really? For a show to like, get that bad. For a show to get that bad? Just off of one character. I just, I mean, not, not just <laughs> like, hey, like, like, I mean, just overall, the show just seemed very. It, it didn't make sense. It didn't Interesting. Make sense. It didn't make sense. Mm. Nick, how about you? I, I, I kind of felt the same. Like initially, when I heard about it, it's nothing like what I expected. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, I have watched and continuously watched this show, even though it's terrible. Um, <laughs> So I'm kind of just like, it's like a dumpster fire that you just can't look away from. Mm -hmm. like, like every time I, like, <laughs> like every time I come, like it's on HBO, it's like, oh, new episodes. I'm like, why not? I'm just, <laughs> Has it just, turned into like one of those shows you just put on and now it's just in the background? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and then like, even if I'm like watching, like, like intently like watching what's going on, I'm like, why is this happening? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Like what's going on? But I can't stop watching it. Emery? <laughs> So I genuinely think like it like when I first saw it and that they were like revamping the characters I'm like why are they revamping the characters uh I if anything they should have like done like a new generation and have the old like uh, original characters come in and like teach them the like the ways uh, that way you don't have to like make anyone angry with like recasting characters, but at the same time, like you get to have this n brand new, fresh slate at the same time, like a uh, uh, like a reboot, but at the same time, like not. So, so also, Emery, like since we've talked before the show about the oh, yeah. show, and you compared it to being sort of like a knockoff of DC's other show, the Harley Quinn show. Yeah. Like, what about what about Velma didn't work? or didn't have the success that Harley Quinn did. So like, I feel like uh, when they were writing uh, the Velma show, they, they literally like watched an episode of the Harley Quinn show, saw the jokes and were like, we could do that, mm -hmm. but took all of the soul out of it. Like, it, it feels inauthentic and it feels like they're trying to like catch the lightning in the bottle of that was like uh, what they were doing with the Harley Quinn show and they weren't able to do it. Because the Harley Quinn show had like the same type of like dark, you know, adult humor. Exactly. And I, I just like, I don't see how it just didn't translate necessarily. Like, you would think, yeah. you would think that'd be able to work. I mean, Harley Quinn is, I guess, necessarily a villain or whatever like that, so. She's an anti-hero. An, an anti-hero. Yeah. But then why wouldn't that translate to, to Scooby-Doo? I mean, because they like they changed so much about the Scooby Doo characters, it's not even the original characters anymore. Oh, <laughs> fair. I mean, I mean, though, but wouldn't you expect like it's Harley Quinn, like mm -hmm. in her head? I, I'm like the cartoon is basically what I picture the inside same. of Harley Quinn's mind would no, look like. No, same. So, so that is a fair take. So I'm gonna swing this question to you about the show. Is there like? Is there something that like just that you just can't like put down like because you said that you keep watching it like is it is it because you're in love with these characters so much that you can't just stop watching or is it because like what about because everyone else how many episodes have you guys seen I only seen like four two I'm like uh, I'm I keep seeing clips and every time I see a clip a part of me dies inside so I can't actually watch the show <laughs> like I can't put myself through it yeah so I'm like. 
Yeah, did the casting of like the different races and ethnicities like help at all? Or like, was it like, what about this show that you can't put down? Like, what draws you to the show that you can't put it away? So I'm the type of person who like, I'm not really stuck in the past. So I'm not even watching this show with the preconception of what the Scooby Gang is. But at the same time, I'm so interested in where they're going with it that I, like, even though it, like most of it is terrible, they have some funny things and they have, like, I'm really here for, like, the writing and the plot. Um, I just, it's like, it's, it's really bad, but at the same time, there's so many, like, things in it that kind of, like, just keep me wanting to know what's gonna happen. So, cause, you, cause you, one of the things we were also talking about before the show was Fred and the character of Fred. What do you think it's about? It's hilarious. <laughs> I think it's so funny. I really do. I really think it's like, like I mean, it's it's bad, but it's that kind of bad that you just like, oh, okay, like <laughs> you know, <laughs> like his entire like man baby character is mm -hmm. so funny to me because honestly, they kind of play that a little bit in the Mystery Inc. series where he's kind of yeah. like where he's like traps this, traps that, but now he's like. He's literally the rich kid, like, child, like, mm. man child. Man child that needs everyone to take care of him. Because mm -hmm. there were some funny jokes about, like, oh, I'm independent. But, oh, can you cut my steak? Can you cut my steak? Mommy cut these. <laughs> like, and I'm just like, but, like, it's just, I don't know. His character is so, so funny to me. And, like, the underlying tones of, like, the different races and the cultures um, kind of play a little bit in it. It's not as, like, accurate as I would like want it to be. Um, I know that Mindy Culling did a really, she did a really good job with like the Indian family mm -hmm. um, for Velma, but like the other ones don't really play as much as I feel like they should. Cause I want to stay on you. So knowing that you know now that you've seen episodes, would you renew it for another show? Absolutely not, no. You wouldn't? <laughs> um, no. no hesitation. <laughs> no hesitation whatsoever. Absolutely. If they created more, more seasons, like another season, would I watch it? Probably. I don't want to um, go down that rabbit hole, though. I don't. <laughs> I feel like they should just. I feel like they should just end that right now. Just pull the. Just pull so the if it got picked up for another season, you don't believe there's a chance where it could redeem itself? Hmm. I feel like with the feedback that they've gotten, especially with that IMBD rating, um, <laughs> they could. Those are just critics, all right? Cool. We don't like critics. Those are just critics. But, like, I mean, but like, if they want it to continue, I feel like they yeah. should, they have exactly. room to change up some things and not like. I saw uh, an Instagram comment that was like, "Go woke, go broke." Mm -hmm. Um, so not play up all of these different like modernized like ideologies and things like that. Don't play that off so much because it's a little too much. Like every other word, you've got. Like you've got different like ideologies, like toxic masculinity, all of that stuff. Like, like you're pushing that too, too much. For and you me. think, and you think yeah. we're at a point where we're kind of like we're kind of over that a little bit, where audiences just want to see something that's just unique. We're not necessarily we're like we're like not necessarily safe, maybe a little bit flagrant or something like that. Yeah, I feel like you can play it, but it's so. I mean, like they're trying to make it comical. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're doing it. They're just doing way too much with it. Like with like like um, beauty standards and things like that. That whole episode, I was just sitting there like. <laughs> Side note, uh, this is the first time I've ever heard anyone say anything positive about the show, like ever. I love the show, Emery. I love the <laughs> like, show. The show is immaculate. I don't know why Andy was talking about. The show is brilliant. Ten out of ten. <laughs> Oscars, Grammys, all that. It gets all of it. Mindy Kalen can't do any wrong. Please continue. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. But I'm going to swing it over to Daylin. Daylin, you yourself is a creator and a writer. So is there anything on the show that would be fixable? Or like, how would you fix the show? Or would you just tear it down from the start and just come up with a whole new process? Um, honestly, okay, if I had a choice, obviously I cut it. But say, if, I, if they were to bring me to the studio right now and say, you have to fix it. I would almost have to pull like a Teen Titans Go mm -hmm. to where you acknowledge how bad you are and how different you are from everything else that you're kind of making fun of yourself for it. Because I think that's Teen Titans Go's like redeeming property is that they, re they recognize that they're not the old show and they're not trying to be the old show. So I think maybe if Velma can like make fun of itself. Like satire? Kind of like make it satire. Like yeah. you have to- But you don't think it already does it enough? I, I can't tell. 
<laughs> like I, I, I can't tell. Some of the, some of the like, the jokes in there, they're so. They're so. Yeah, they're just, they're like, they're can't, just, can't I can't tell if you're like trying to make fun of yourself, if you're trying to just be funny because it's not, it's not funny. Okay. I, I so like, let's say you just all right. So instead, instead of bringing you in, let's say you had a clean slate. Would you go the same route of making an adult humor, or would you stick to like just fundamentally something like I guess PG or PG thirteen, something like? Would you go back to the kid show, or would you try this adult humor like this? You know, oh, because that's the whole new thing now. We all want to make everything but, rated R. And but adult the thing humor. is, they did it with the the Scooby Natural uh, crossover. They've done it already, and they were able to successfully do it. But what's the point? I didn't, I didn't see Scooby Natural. Scooby natural yeah he, so, was, he, he was alive he was like with hairs and stuff oh uh, so <laughs> like so scooby-doo like crossed over with supernatural and like and it was a, a supernatural like episode but in the scooby-doo universe mm. and like there was like actual like murders in it because it's supernatural but what's the point it's my question why are you taking a property like scooby-doo and like trying to make it adult comedy i feel like it, it's one of those things it's like making a, a ninja turtles <laughs> Wait, they're like stabbing each other and cutting off people's arms. Like, what's didn't, the point? Didn't Michael Bay do that in like 2000? Was it good? I didn't. Uh, All right, fair uh, enough. I, I didn't it see it. <laughs> I did see the it Scooby Natural episode. Yeah, absolutely it was bliss. Beautiful. Absolutely bliss. It was, it was beautiful. It was, yeah. a, it was so good. I don't know where they're missing the mark. Honestly, playing well, like in the first few seconds of the the episode, Velma is talking about like you know, this is where we started. I feel like they shouldn't have done that. If you're gonna make something different, then just make it different and don't go back to the original. Absolutely. Period. I mean, it lost me, because I thought them would be black, which turns out Indian. That, that, I'm like, oh, what happened? I thought we were getting two things back to back. But <laughs> as, we, <laughs> as we close this chapter on bad entertainment, coming up next, we'll discuss the good Sam Smith album, Gloria. Glory, hallelujah. Well, glory be to Sam Smith. The British singer-songwriter has come out with their fourth studio album, Gloria, which was released on January 27th. Today, we are sitting down talking through the album and what we thought overall. All right, guys, let's go off with favorite songs at first. So my personal favorites, my top three, were Love Me More, Lose You, and I'm Not Here to Make Friends. I felt like, you know, I needed two little sad songs. I needed like yeah. one, like, you know, club banger. Yeah. And I'm Not Here to Make Friends just hit for me. Okay, really so was No, no, yeah, they were good. It was, it was. <laughs> Um, so mine are Love Me More, How to Cry, and then Who We Love. I'm just a sucker for songs that like I can just sing in my car to, yeah. which it mostly contains those songs because I just like to belt out those songs. Mm -hmm. Solid. No, I would say um, Lose You, uh, How to Cry, and uh, Hindu Bank Friends was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite is No God, Lose You, How to Cry, Not Here to Make Friends, and then also I gotta throw in... If you say unholy. <laughs> I kind of like You're it. I kind of like Next. it. Do you actually like it? I kind of like it because I like to make fun of it. But that's how different. Well, you like, don't like but it. That's, yeah, that's not liking it. But I enjoy listening to it so I can do like, like, mommy don't know. Like, I just okay, like, <laughs> I like, out, put that song in, run. Oh, okay. <laughs> run, yes. No. Run on the treadmill. Put oh, it in, I thought you meant like run away it. from it. So oh. run on the treadmill. <laughs> was that this a purposeful not run. Like thing no. that you had it playing? No, or? it happened. Actually, here's the story. So okay. I was in the car with my mom, came on on the radio, and my mom was like, this would be a great song to run to. So I was like, you know oh. what? Let me try that out. Perfect, great, mm -hmm. wonderful, because it's just got a good beat. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. No, We're already kind of talking about Unholy, which is you know a song we don't like, but I mean it did win the Grammy, so I guess we have to give it some respect. Yeah. And I will give it the fact that you know it did have the honorable fact that Kim Petras was a part of the song, and she is the first transgender woman to win a Grammy, which you know incredible honor. So I, proud of her. Yeah. Incredible song. So. Like the song it's might be bad, but it made history. I gotta, yes. I gotta yeah. say though, I had no clue that like Sam Smith wrote Unholy. I was like <laughs> really? listening. Wait, I just like, didn't like, even the dance. Like, really, they're like, well, <laughs> <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, I knew the song, Please, but I just let's all do that again. I just <laughs> never cared enough to be like, who sings this? No, valid, valid. Um, but my least favorite song was Give Me. 
Okay. Me. Yeah. I, it just like I it was I was getting annoyed by it. I was just getting annoyed by like give me, give me. I was like, please stop. No, the here's, first, here's like, the thing. Six, <laughs> the first like six <laughs> seconds, <laughs> I was like, never mind. No, yeah, never same. Mind. Skip. Right. No, here's the thing with gimme is that the same thing with running to unholy. Where if you just do like a little like a little <laughs> dance to it, you're like, okay, this is pretty good. Like gimme, gimme, give me. It was yeah, like, I, it's I, not yeah, bad. I can see that. I, I really dislike it. Okay. I think it's like cringy. Like yeah. Says the girl who loves unholy. But it's funny though. But coffee's verse and it was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, what about you guys? Okay, why aren't we talking about the live tracks on this album? Fair. Because I really enjoyed those. I'm like a sucker for like live renditions of, even though some of them were like older tracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yes. thought that was totally added to them. I think it's just because genuinely like when you look at the album, it's not on the album. They're just mm -hmm. like additions. Like I think yeah. it's the Apple Music right. editions. So yeah. But I would argue that sometimes the additions that artists put on albums are better than the actual album. Yeah, yeah. true, yeah. true. Which I think is really interesting because the additions are what reach the real fans because they want to mm -hmm. see all of it. Yeah. So, I will what say, the artist considers mistakes. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Their rendition of Time After Time on their live album is yes. spot on spectacular. Mm -hmm. All right, so like, let's give it a rating. I gave it a nine out of 10. I'd probably bump it down to like 8.5 or nine, but I really liked it. I enjoyed it. They said that the two different styles they were going for were, you know, like the like slower songs they're normally more known for, but they also wanted to have like LGBTQ plus club bangers that like, you know, you can go and love, especially with like some sad songs that they were like, you know what, you might be sad, but you can go out and have a great time to this song yes. and that's what's gonna happen. So, yes. I, I gave it like an overall eight out of 10. I think, I mean, I honestly really liked all of the solo songs. I just, I think with some of the upbeat songs, I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, totally. Which wasn't, they weren't bad, but I was just like, this could be better. Right. No, I would give it an 8 out of 10. I feel like all the songs were really solid, but I think the track list in general kind of was, had like sporadic little moments yeah. where it's like, oh, what's happening here? Yeah. I gave it a 7. <laughs> right. And all Silence. seven of those are unholy. No, I'm kidding. I was uh, gonna say, uh, <laughs> unholy. Please. Good answer. No, I just I think ever since I've listened to like SZA's album, everything just is never as good as I want okay. it to be now. Okay. That's valid. So yeah, that seven out of ten, <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's yeah. good. I mean, right. I agree. Like seven, yeah. seven and a half, eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it was really good, like diverse yeah. kind of catalog of music, and I think it really added to their. Yeah. I'd also give it like a seven out of ten because I wouldn't reach for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's not there something that I would choose to listen to. It's I would just like I would just like pick some of the songs. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. I would like be like, oh my God, I, I need to with. listen to yeah. the entire album. No, oh listening God. to that album made me want to go back to his other albums, like Love Goes. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, when two plus two equals four, five plus five equals ten, then who are you gonna call? Did that sound a little incoherent? Well, I guess that's perfect for our next segment coming up after the break. Rounds of incoherent. The game where you get an illegible sentence and try to decipher it into English. Our contestants will be given phrases and 25 seconds to decipher them. The first one to raise their hand will be given a chance to guess what it means. If they don't get it, someone can steal. And the player with the most points wins. Let's get into it. I'm Let's nervous. get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I know it, but like at the same like I feel like I know stuff, but at the same time it's just not going to go well. Also, mm. I am giving out hints, so if you're really stuck, you get one hint. Okay. Okay, right. sounds okay. good, sounds good. Raising our hands, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we gotta keep an eye out to yeah, see who's I'm, going. I'm, I got it, don't even worry. <laughs> Do we have graphics? Oh, I'm nervous. I am too. <laughs> do, 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 Are we is, it, is it incoherent? Do, do, do. <laughs> 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 who is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a ghost. No, you're like Okay. Insane. So has anyone played Incoherent before? No. I have before, actually, with you. I've so. played it with Okay, oh. there we go. Oh. Oh. Something's there. Oh. Suck, Thuddy. Saying it out loud is helpful. Sup, Bill, Thuddy. Sup, Thuddy. Sup, Thuddy. Sup, Thuddy. Sup, Thuddy. Sup, Thuddy. Oh, my God. I feel like I know what it is, but Sup, Sup, Thuddy. Sup, Thuddy. Can we get a hint? <laughs> Um, it's hot goss. It's what? Hot goss, like hot gossip. Oh. Oh. Is it? Go ahead. Yeah. Spill the tea? It is, in <gasps> fact. Oh my god. <gasps> That's still really confusing. Oh. <laughs> I really thought The sub was getting me. We really were like, yeah, we know. <laughs> no, oh, I guess it oh. is. Oh. Hit sprint, heat bitch. 
Okay, oh. definitely bitch. You don't, yeah, it's on the full. Oh, it's on the thing in front it's of you. You don't have to turn around. Bitch. It's Brittany. Bitch. Oh. Yes. Uh, it's Brittany. Ah, <gasps> uh, continue it. Bitch. Uh. Damn it! <laughs> I was okay. like, okay. Rock is good at that. Rock yeah, is no, the only the one on the board. Yeah, yeah. So, watch yeah, your tongue in your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch it, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we got next. <laughs> this is all pop culture. Some of them are a little outdated, but yes. Yeah, I know. You told me this earlier. Okay. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Say it faster. Fence to hug out. Fence to hug out. Fence to hug out. Oh my god. I think it's funny because we can hear it. Right, I'm going to say, but Kelsey's literally saying. Yeah. Fence to hug out. The math ain't mathing. Fence to hug. What's the. Fence to hug out. Fence to hug out. Oh! I think that's so funny. Well, and when you guys are saying it, we can totally hear it. Yeah, like, we're like, yeah. Embarrassed. Yeah, I can this. Yeah, no. Guy in the chin. Oh. There you go. All right. Okay. Let's go, okay. Cassie. Um, <gasps> yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay, girl. She, yeah. Let's okay. Did she see the answer? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm rooting for You're you. You're getting it now. <laughs> go see and Rocco going head to head. Oh. Yes. So Snapchat. Huh? No, no it's not. Uh, Snoop yeah. Dogg? Yes. Oh! oh okay, you all heard me say that. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh. Oh. You didn't buzz in? Oh. <laughs> and we didn't hear it, so I'm not sure. You got played. That is so fake. You got played. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now I'm rooting for Skylar. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is. She was silent. Okay, okay. Were next you one. Silent? Oh, okay. Or are you silent? <laughs> okay! <laughs> all right, Anthony. <laughs> I'm just here for the commentary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? I'm nervous. I realized that I put a bunch of the same type of thing. Oh my gosh, I knew it too. <laughs> Did you hit yourself? Are you okay? No, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> the point. Anthony got it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you hit the back of my chair. You good? It's an L at the end. Yeah, I think so. Oops. Take your mask off if you can't see. No, I can see it. I just have to have a. Ips. Ips don't we? Don't forget that you get a head. Ips don't Oh. Yes. Ips don't lie. Yep. Dang mm. it. Oh. The hand was Shakira, Shakira. Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I feel like I'm getting judged. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah, pretty, I mean. pretty harshly. Ariana Grande. Oh, oh sorry. Um, yes. Good yes. job, Chris. Okay. Uh, on the board. <laughs> Everyone is on the board <laughs> except for Skylar. Um, Alifa Rodrigo. Oh, Olivia Rodrigo. Yes. Yep. Oh. Uh, Rocco just Rock listens Rico. to everybody else say it out yes, loud. Yes, I swear <laughs> they say it. Yeah, because we it just was. told yeah. we were like, <laughs> we're like, we can hear you guys saying it. Say it in your head. Dang. Okay. <laughs> Skylar. Skylar. She got that one. Oh, goodness me. This is so difficult. The silence. <laughs> this doesn't feel right. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, what? Oh, you're so right. It's the first one. That's still or what? Oh, the bachelor what? Yep. Yep. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I. <laughs> so my roommates printed out. I love how everyone is like that. stark silent because uh. they know what's going on. Oh, binge watch. Oh. Yep. What? Who was saying it? Were Rock any of you saying it over there? No, like but. Why myself? We was okay. How about even? That doesn't even make. It's binge watching. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, Netflix and shit. Oh, oh, my hair was up. Oh, oh, no, no. no. Oh, that's not you. Sorry, Three guys. people had their hands up. Okay. So Chris was first. Yeah, that's fair. We're, right. yes. we're going to give it to Chris. Thank you. I Chris appreciate that. <laughs> the funny thing is, what if he didn't know what it was? We just raised <laughs> it up. <laughs> oh, wait. We just. What? <laughs> 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 I thought we just made it to the side. Huh? 
Oh, yeah, they're getting harder. These are full sentences. Social media talks. Go ahead. Media no, tea no. talks. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what did you oh, say? Social media tea talks. Oh, oh not nah. tea talks. Social media TikToks. Not no. You want me to give you a hint? Yeah. Yeah. Something people do for a little while because today's society is toxic AF. So exactly what you said. You just got the last. You word got the wrong. yeah. So yeah. It's not tea talks. <laughs> um, social media. Um, social uh, media. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! What was the hint again? It's something people do with like their like social media to kind of get away from society. It's when like people take a break from social media. Okay. I oh. think we should just okay. that. It's social media detox. Uh, oh. We have to go to the winner who is Rocco. Darn. Yeah. That yeah, like, by <laughs> like by a lot. Like by a lot. Like it's just uh, he cheater. 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 For a minute there we thought Kelsey had him, but uh mm. <laughs> Yeah, I there was a minute there too, but then he cheated. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> this is the end of our show for tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week for more celebrity. celebrity. Have a nice night.